All right, so welcome to chapter eight, lecture B. If you remember, this is what our periodic table looks like. You have to label S, then P, then D, then F. You label one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven, three, four, five, six, seven, four, five. And once you've done that, you've set yourself up uh, pretty well. So in the last section, we um, learned a lot about uh, electron configuration. Now we're going to look at electron quantum number, or, excuse me, or quantum numbers for specific electrons. We're also going to look at diamagnetism and paramagnetism. So I don't really give too much of an introduction here in your notes. I just say, what are the quantum numbers of the fifth electron in neon? And that's because the best way to go about this is just to do it. So looking at neon, it's right here. And let's say we're looking at the electron configuration of neon, which we will. The electron configuration of neon, the full electron would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Um, and so if we were to draw this out in a linear fashion, which we started doing in the last lecture a little bit, I would call this my 1s. My 2s, remember each, each s only has one orbital. The p, do you remember how many orbitals that has? Hopefully you remember it's got three. So that'd be my 2p orbital. And each orbital holds two electrons. So in my 1s I have two, 2s I have two, and in my 2p I have six. Now I asked you for the fifth electron in neon. So let's go ahead and start counting these. In my 1s, I do one up, then one down. So this is number one, number two. In my 2s, one up, one down, so number three, number four. And then my 2p, it's really important that you understand how to count these, and you wanna separate them out because no two electrons want to be close to each other. So this is my number five, this is the one we're looking for. Six, seven, then once we go up, then we come back and we do down. Eight, nine, 10. So essentially I said, what are the quantum numbers of this? What the heck are quantum numbers? Well, just like electrons configuration tells us how electrons are arranged in an atom, quantum numbers tell us exactly where those electrons are. Um, well, to the best of our ability. They tell us that, hey, it has to be in this particular orbital and this particular location with this particular spin. So if you remember, we talked about spin in the last lecture with, with our hands here. So this is the one we're looking at, and this is the one we're interested in. There are four quantum numbers, n, l, m sub l, and m sub s. So this set of four numbers will tell you exactly where an electron is located in terms of uh, orbital and spin. All right, so we're looking at this one, the fifth one. n is always going to be the number here, and we also even discussed that in the last one. N is going to be 2. It's a 2p, and I would often say it's a 2p. The what p? The 2p. The what p? The 2p. The 2 is 2. N is 2. So because this electron falls here, it's 2. Its L is going to be dependent on the type of orbital it is. If it's an s, actually let me go draw this out a little better, maybe up here so you can put it in your notes. If it's um, an s, P, D, or F, the L is going to be 0, 1, 2, or 3, respectively. So in this case, we're talking about a P, so the L is going to be 1. N sub L is a little bit different. M sub L, you actually have to have drawn these out and understand what's going on. The center orbital is always going to be labeled zero. So here we had three orbitals, so this one's going to be labeled zero. To the right, you're going to use positive numbers, and to the left, you're going to use negative numbers. So the right, I'll make this plus one, and to the left, I'll make this negative one. So my m sub l here is negative one. Now we look at spin. This is m sub s. This is telling you, is it going one particular way or the other particular way? If it's pointed up, it's got a positive one half for its MS. 
If it's pointing down, it's got a negative one half for its MS. So in this case, hopefully you can see it's pointed up. So our MS is positive one half. Now you can look at these numbers, a two, a one, and a negative one, and a positive one half. And you can actually decipher a lot of information from that. In fact, let's go backwards. This is not how I normally teach it, but it makes sense to me to do this right now. Let's go backwards. So let's say I, I say, hey, where is this electron? Well, you know that it's got an N of two, telling you it's two something. You know that it's L is one, telling you it's a two P. It's M sub L is negative one, so two P would be like this, because there's gotta be three orbitals in P. And M sub L is negative one. Well, the, z the center one is zero, up is positive one, down to the left is negative one and it tells you that it's got an ms of one half. So we knew that it's m sub l was over here, and or excuse me, it's got an ms of positive one half. We knew it's m sub l was over here, and we know that it's pointed up. So we just went backwards and told you right where that electron is. No other electron could have those same quantum numbers. Okay, the next question is what are the 15th, uh, quantum numbers of the 15th electron in chlorine? Ooh, and then I ask, is it diet or paramagnetic? So let's go back. Sorry, I kind of skipped over that. Diet or paramagnetic. So diamagnetism, I like to think of it as like killing magnetism. So I have a picture of stabbing a magnet in one of my lectures. So it's essentially killing magnetism. It's when all the electrons are paired because if, if they're all paired, you got one going this way and one going this way, there's nothing uneven. What makes something magnetic is if there's uneven amount of electrons, not, oh, an unpaired amount of electrons. I just need to be very careful with what I just said. Scratch. Scratch the even. Don't look for even numbers. It's going to kill you. Look for things that are paired. So in this case, this is, they're all paired. All of them have to be paired. And when they're all paired, this is diamagnetism. There's no, there's no unequal amount or unequal distribution of spin of electrons. So they're all paired. This is diamagnetic. You killed the magnetism here. Let's look at chlorine. What are the quantum numbers of the 15th electron in chlorine? Well, we go to chlorine down here. I'm actually going to start at neon this time. Do some shorthand. So neon is 3s2. Or chlorine is three, neon 3s2, 3p5. Now, if you remember, neon counts for the first 10 electrons. So when we do the 3s2 and the 3p5, this neon counted for 10. So to get to chlorine, the next one's going to be electron number 11. So this is electron 11. And then down, 12. And then we get to the p, and if you remember, you got to spread them out. 13, 14. 15, ding, 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 this is the one we're looking for. And then you go back, 16, 17, because there are 17 electrons in chlorine. Okay, so this is the one we're interested in. Let's go ahead and see if we can figure it out. Remember that we're looking at it in terms of N, L, M sub L, and M sub S. <coughs> Our N, is going to be which orbital it's in. It says which level it's at three. Our L, if you remember, S is zero, P is one, D is two, and F is three. So here our L, <coughs> excuse me, has to be one. Our M sub L is based on how we label this. Remember the center one gets a zero, to the right gets a positive, and to the left gets a negative. And we'll do examples where we have D, um, maybe even F as well. So our M sub L has to be positive one here because it's right here. Our M sub S just asks if it's up or down. In this case, it's up, so it's a positive one half. I suggest taking this information and going backwards as well 
to, to make sure that you're comfortable with that. Also, by the way, is this para or diamagnetic? Has the magnetism been killed? It doesn't look like it to me because it looks like this one's uneven. It looks like it's there. It's, it's still spinning. It hasn't been paired with something else. It's unpaired, I should say. And therefore, this is actually paramagnetic. This would be magnetic. Okay, so let's drive this point home. Which of the following could not apply to any of arsenic's um, electrons? So arsenic's right here. And it gives us uh, two examples. One says the N is four, so both of them have four. This one says an L of zero, so we're talking about a 4S orbital. This is an L of two. An L of two would be 4D. This has an M sub L of zero, so we're essentially that makes sense, 4s, so m sub l is 0, and the positive 1 half. So it would be pointed like this. This would be a 4d orbital, which would have 5 orbitals within it. It says it's m sub l is positive 1, so we'd start with a 0, positive 1, you go positive 2, negative 1, negative 2. So this says it's uh, got an m sub l of positive 1, so right here, and it's a negative 1 half, so we're talking about this electron right there. And the question is, which of these could not apply to arsenic? Well, arsenic's right here. Arsenic's got some 1s's, it's got some 2s's, it's got some 2p's, it's got some 3s's, it's got some 3p's, it's got some 4s's, it's got some 3d's, it's got some 4p's, and that's where we end. Do we ever get to 4d, which is down here? The answer is no, and that's why this would be your answer. We don't have a 4D. So we could have stopped right when we got there, but if, I don't know. It's fun to keep going. All right. Oh, for real? Wow, we're done. We're done with lecture B, apparently. That was short and sweet and to the point. Woohoo! I like short, sweet, to the point. All right, y'all. Keep studying. And I'll be back with lecture soon in a bit. Bye. All right, so now it says, which of the following is paramagnetic? And it gives us a few different examples. Um, the first mercury, then lead two, then lead four, and copper two. So let's go ahead and look at the electron configuration of each of these. Um, again, we're gonna do shorthand to make it real fast. And let's go ahead and start with mercury. So for mercury, we're talking about xenon, 6s2. Then we got, every time we go from 6s2, we got to go down to these f's. We got 4f14, 5d10, and that is the electron configuration of mercury. Now you pretty much see that anything um, at the end over here is always going to be full, but nevertheless, let's go ahead and draw this out. We got 6s. We got 4F14, so we need seven of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And for the 5D, we need five. Again, because each one only holds two electrons. So if we went to fill this out, we'd say one, two. Side effects are, or sound effects are necessary, and then we get to the 5D. And these are all full, and this would be diamagnetic. The question is which is paramagnetic, so that didn't work. Again, you could have just looked at this and said, hey, anything, anything that's gonna be at the end of a block, whether it's here, 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 or here, is always going to be paramagnetic or excuse me, it's always gonna be diamagnetic. It's always going to be all paired. Now we get to PB2 plus. Lead's right here. We're going to be taking away um, the valence electrons from the P orbital. So you could have just looked at this and said, hey, we're gonna take t 
two electrons away, and that would bring us to the end of a block. And that's why we know that this is going to be uh, diamagnetic, or we could draw it out just for fun, just because we need the practice, and say xenon. Kind of the same exact thing as mercury, 6s2, 4f14, 5d10, but after the 5d10, comes 6p, it would have been 6p2, but we're talking about a 2 plus lead, so this actually goes away. We pull from the valence electrons there. It's the exact same thing as mercury. These are isoelectric. They're the same electron configuration, and this is diamagnetic because they're going to be exactly the same. We get to lead 4 plus, and what's going to happen? Well, this is going to be a common mistake, so I'm going to take my time on this one. When we do uh, the electron configuration for lead 4 plus, we take two electrons away from here. The intuition is to pull two from here. But remember, the D block's really, really strong, it's super stable. And how many valence electrons did lead have, anyways? By now, we should know it's got one, two, three, four valence electrons, meaning these aren't valence electrons. We're not pulling electrons from them. We're going to pull from these two, and then those two, and then go back to the D block. So when we're talking about pulling four valence electrons away, we're pulling from the P block, and then the S's. So we would normally write 6s2, 4f14, 5d10, 6p2, again, Lead only has four valence electrons coming from here and here. These outer ones look for the highest number. We're taking away four, so we're taking away from the P first. That would give me a, a lead two plus as above. And we take away from here too. That would give us a lead four plus. So now we've got 4F14, 5D10. Hey, we still have a, sh a full, uh, full subshell. And you could draw it out. It would look very similar to this without this, and so this is diamagnetic as well. Last but not least, we get to copper. So we're gonna do copper, and we're like, hey, we highlighted that. Good thing too, because you'll get a completely different answer if you didn't. So we highlighted this. So let's go ahead and draw this out. Copper, if you remember, is 4s1. Let's go ahead and do argon. 4s1, 3d9. It's got 10 valence electrons. And it'd been really common, uh, it's a, it'd be a really easy mistake to make, especially if I asked you, uh, or excuse me, 4s1, 3d10. It's got 11 valence electrons. My dog is dreaming and it's, you guys wanna see? Let's see if I can do this without screwing up. Is that good? It's four in the morning, and I've been up doing this since midnight, trying to do it before my kids get up. They're about to get up, but I think we're gonna win. Okay, so we got four S one, three D ten. Um, this is, uh, and this would be for just regular old copper, but it's copper two plus. So we have to take two electrons away. We take away one from here. And then we're left, we don't have a choice. We have to take one away from here. So this would have been argon, 3D9. So this one was copper. This is copper, 2 plus. And so if we draw this out, if this is our 3D subshell, we have nine electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hey, is that one paired? The answer is no. And this one is para. So I made you wait until the very end before we got our answer. All right, I think I'm done with uh, lecture B. Lecture C will continue on shortly. Bye.